This is the first of two videos that are to do with how we receive information from our environment and how we receive information from within ourselves. And a study on a way in which to enliven the interior information, the information that comes to our joints, the size, shape of our physical being as opposed to the information that comes in from the environment, uh, what we can see, what we can hear, what we can taste when something touches us and we touch it. And this is a way to, by enlivening the interior information, we can begin to bring about a bit of a balance in our relationship with the world around us. So we start with the hand and it's useful to do one side at a time if you were to draw a line through the middle vertically and we start with one side because the contrast gives us very very useful information about when we've enlivened one side and the other side has not yet uh, been given that kind of attention, the contrast can sometimes be very revealing. So the suggestion is to start perhaps with a side that you might not usually start with. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to start with my right side. And also you can Close your eyes if you want to. I'm going to keep mine open. Um, but it's also very nice to close the eyes. So I'm going to ask questions of each area of my body, starting with the hand. Without looking at my hand, I know size it is. Is it as big as a house? Is it as small as a mouse? Without looking at my hand, I know where it is. Is it behind my back? Or touching my head? No. It's sitting on my knee. I know where it is, I know what size it is, I know what shape it is. I know without looking whether my fingers are curled or open, whether my thumb is tucked in or lying to the side. So I know its size, shape, where it is. Is it part of me? Yes. Is it alive? Perhaps I can detect my pulse. So the second area is the foot, and I can ask the same questions. I know without looking at my foot what size it is, roughly how far it is from my toes to my heels, how broad, how deep from the sole of my foot to the upper surface of my foot. I know where it is. Is it tucked under my knee or is it stretched out a little? 
Is it slightly turned in or out? Has it rolled onto the outer little toe side of the foot? Or inwards onto the big toe side of the foot? I know how big it is, where it is, what shape it is. Perhaps I can detect a pulse. It's a bit like turning the lights on, on a Christmas tree, coming on one at a time. The third area is the leg, from the ankle through the knee to the hip. How big is this leg? volume of the leg, the calf and the thigh, the length and the width, what shape it is. I know this without looking because the information is freely available to my nervous system and its feedback. I know where it is. Has it rolled out to the side or inwards? I know pretty much the angle of the knee. I know that it's attached to me and that it's alive. And I can sense its fullness. fourth area is the arm, from wrist, elbow, shoulder, and across to the inside knobble of the collarbone, and including the shoulder blade. I know the size without looking. I know where it is. I know what shape it is, whether it's stretched out or softly resting at my side. I can feel the fullness and the volume of it. It belongs to me. Yes, it's alive. The fifth area is the torso. From the sitting bone at the base, all the way through to the top rib at the base of my neck. I'm aware of the length the size of my torso, of its height on this side, of its width from the middle and out to my right side, the depth from front to back, its fullness, it's stuffed full of organs on the inside. And as I breathe, I'm aware of the slight stretch of skin with the movement of my ribs. And it's very definitely Part of me is mine and it's absolutely alive. And the sixth area is my head on my side, on this right side. Of 
What size is it? If I don't look at the camera, it's very interesting. Today it feels huge. From the top of my head to the base of my jaw, my face, the width, the depth of my nose to the back of my head. from my nose to my ear. I'm aware of my cheeks, my cheek on this side, and of the blinking of my eye. I know where it is, perched on the top of my torso, on the top of my spine. I'm aware of the subtle movements as I speak. Size, shape, wear. So we've looked at the hand, the foot. Looking isn't quite the right word. We've paid attention to the hand, foot, the leg, the arm, the torso, and the head. I'm going to suggest you pause the video now and take yourself for a little walk around the room and there are certain things. Notice what you notice, whether you notice a contrast in how you perceive and experience each side. And notice how you perceive the space around you. If you pause the video now, and then when you come back, I'll ask another couple of questions. It's very interesting, isn't it? Um, yesterday, some of us felt the ground to be very different under one foot and the other, or the space to be very friendly. If someone were to sit next to me on this side, perhaps I would feel more interested in them, or they, they would appear to be more colourful somehow. Or on the other hand, it might be that the space is so exquisite on that side that the last thing you want is for anybody to come into it, for example. And for me on my other side, it feels somehow greyer, duller, less delicately coordinated, all sorts of possibilities. So this is a way to enliven our kinesthetic sense, the information that comes from the inside. And um, there are various ways to do this study. You could take both sides at once, but then you, you sort of miss out on the delicacy of the contrast. So of course, having done one side, you would pay attention to the other side. And finally, one way to complete this is if you have your eyes closed as you pay attention and turn on the lights, as it were, when you come to the last area, the head, you could then very slowly, as your eyelids raise, be curious to know whether you can sustain the fullness of your felt experience of that side and keep it as a priority so that when you do open your eyes, 
that sensation isn't overwhelmed by the rush, the flood of visual information that comes in. If you practice this regularly, you'll be then able to evoke that by counting one hand, two the foot, three the leg, four the arm, five the torso, six the head, so that you become quite deft in calling up the kinesthesia.